horsemen here. Uh, the thought I just basically do a review of 2019 and uh, yeah basically sum up the year and perhaps talk about uh, a few I don't know investing strategies or whatnot uh, since I'll be leaving uh, tomorrow uh, for the holidays I won't really have a chance to uh, do this before year end uh, anyway uh, main portfolio ended up or at least at the moment is up 63.48 percent which is of course uh, good but as you can see I mean it it was really swingy and I mean uh, most of this rise is basically uh, yeah, the majority is fueled by the the rise in Novo, and uh, I'm actually not sure what this tip here was was about. But anyway, uh, and looking at uh, the start of well, I guess uh, beginning of year 2016 up until today, uh, plus three and ninety nine point forty five percent, which I'm of course very happy with. Uh, and if I'm going to talk a bit about uh, what would explain his moves, uh, I guess, first of all, uh, I usually have a very concentrated portfolio. And you can obviously see these uh, yeah, basically large up waves followed by corrections and then uh, uh, up waves again. Uh, this, for example, was uh, yeah, basically the start of the bull and I was new into the mining space. I didn't know much about uh, mining at all, actually, or geology, uh, but I picked up uh, a bunch of basically uh, silver beta plates, if I recall correctly. I remember uh, buying silver standard standard. Uh, when it corrected like 10% on a day when gold and silver was down, I don't know, 1-2% one, one, or something. It just felt uh, excessive. I mean, e even though even though I didn't, I don't know, as I said, really have a firm grasp on mining and stuff, it just struck me as, okay, I, I don't exactly remember how I thought, but... Uh, my base case was that miners were really cheap based on the uh, things, the broad things that I've read about it. And I was very bullish on gold and silver uh, due to perhaps obvious reasons. Uh, so I knew I, w I wanted to be in the miners. I had already decided in, I don't know, 2014-15 that uh, uh, gold and silver... Uh, would be the place to be in my opinion uh, and so I, I before this I pretty much only had some uh, physical silver and a, a bit of gold uh, but then I again, uh, got into mining shares so this was uh, just a wicked uh, uh, beta play uh, with uh, Bear Creek mining and Great Panther and uh, Avino Silver and the Silver Standard and stuff like that. So I was pretty lucky to uh, pick a lot of those stocks uh, up near the bottom because some of them uh, went up like 400% or something and the portfolio went up 300% basically in a couple of months. Uh, beginner's luck, obviously. Uh, and uh, then we got the... You know, a big correction because I mean ever since 2016 17 uh, uh, yeah 16 17 uh, the miners started sucking again well the, yeah this was the peak 2016 and the uh, GDXJ hasn't even surpassed those highs yet uh, so uh, my portfolio went with the JDXJ basically, but I guess since I had more beta on, I 
probably corrected even uh, harder than the GDXJ. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is the period where I uh, read uh, Bob Moriarty's article on Novo Resources and again didn't really understand what Novo was about. Uh, but I mean the the value proposition made sense. I just remember okay reading that uh, th this might be another Vitz and even though I did uh, think that Novo was kind of expensive at the time uh, based on what they had uh, basically confirmed. Uh, they only had like Beedens Creek back then at least as far as I knew and um, but at the same time I mean since the upside seemed so you know unconventional of course it should be uh, trading higher than I don't know the typical junior so I took a large position in Novo here and that was uh, I don't know a month or two maybe not a couple of months before uh, Novo started to run towards uh, eight or nine dollars or something uh, so that basically lifted my whole portfolio uh, but I tried to keep my position size at around 30% I think so uh, I started I, I based on that I was forced to take profits you know uh, on the way up otherwise if I would have kept my entire no position it would have made it would have made up like i don't know 95 percent of my portfolio or whatever and that that was too crazy even for me uh but in hindsight of course i i should have just uh read the novo and my graph would be up here or something uh but i don't really regret it or regret it because in hindsight uh, everything's 2020 as you know uh, and uh, then we got the correction in novo i remember which obviously brought down my portfolio as well. And then uh, we had a cascade in... When was that? Uh, uh, yeah, around second half of 2017, I guess. Uh, we had these really... I, I think one was, uh, th this was the, this or this fall was the, uh, after the news that there wasn't any disseminated fine gold in the Comet Well and Perdish War conglomerates. But I just remember when it, when it reached this level around, I don't know, two, three or something, it was, it was just mind-blowing to me, even though, I mean, I just uh, began to really get a grip what Karatha was all about which was the thing that pushed Novo from uh, sub one dollar to nine dollars so I just basically I guess went against the grain and just loaded up big time uh, I, I think I loaded up pretty much at the interim bottom around here at least I bought a big chunk I think I was up to I don't know 65-70% of no or something uh, so I have my portfolio actually peaked in 2018 uh, meanwhile the miners overall were sucking you know they were near uh, not the lows but I mean still in a two year correction so I was obviously beating the market handily at that point in time uh, but then <laughs> Then I was sadly all in around here uh, and uh, I think that day here when they released the uh, Commonwealth bulk, sam bulk samples the, the stock dove like 30% in one day I think. So this is like a 30% cut in my entire portfolio because my entire portfolio was no. Uh, so that sucked obviously. Um, and in hindsight, I should probably have, I don't know, obviously not have 100% in one stock. Uh, but anyway, uh, it is what it is. Uh, you, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword. Uh, and I mean, 
this period here that's just you know trying to find some uh, some good stocks and I, I just especially when we hit the what I perceive to be a double bottom uh, I started loading uh, up big time on Novo again I mean Novo was pretty much always my largest position ever since I found the company uh, but but I mean, as most people know, I mean, I, I thought the news had been getting better and better for uh, six months or more, probably more than that. So, I mean, I just, I just loaded up uh, and I mean, e even though Noah has been my largest position, but in varying degrees uh, between like, I don't know, uh, most of the time, at least 30%, but up to 100%. Uh, even though Novo is still, I mean, quite a fair bit from all-time high, uh, just catching falling knives, and you know when you have conviction, and you think, uh, or yeah, you believe that uh, the next rise is more a question of when, not if. I mean, then you have the basically the fortitude to. Uh, buy when others are selling i mean i think you most people remember the the trolling that went around during the yeah basically when we grinded it uh, at two dollars i mean there was constant trolling every almost every pundit known to man was bashing novo uh basically saying how uh, there were, were only idiots who would invest in Novo and it was a scam and it was overpriced and blah 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 uh, and uh, I mean even though most of those people have been in the mining industry for longer than me I mean uh, to me it was pretty obvious that they uh, you know were missing the point at least I mean you can be a good geologist and mining engineer or whatever that doesn't make you a good investor because, I mean, it's not hard to be bearish on a stock uh, that's near 52-week lows. And it's at the same time not easy to load up during the uh, low points uh, when your portfolio is going against you and uh, your biggest holding is going against you. Uh, but I just, I don't know, I did my own due diligence. I trusted uh, my conviction basically so as i said even though no has been the main determinant of my portfolio you can see that my portfolio is actually has actually been going upwards while no has been going down that's just because i loaded up a lot uh, during the dips when i simply thought it was too cheap e e regardless of I mean the risks and stuff. I mean there there comes a point where the risks are more than reflected in the share price. So I mean if I am I have no pro problem loading up at those points and I mean let's say it if you think it should be trading 50% higher for um whatever reason. I mean you then you just load up during the lows and 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 then you can to not have one position totally eclipse your portfolio you can you know lighten up uh, during the the rises and stuff i mean it shouldn't be i mean you should be pragmatic and uh, i mean the the i don't know e even if you believe uh, that it's the best case in the world i mean how much of a difference is it if you would have some crazy amount like 75% or, uh, versus 100%. I mean, you'd probably sleep a lot better at 75 and you wouldn't miss out on that much upside even if everything, you know, blue sky materializes or whatever. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not good at selling, uh, but if I have done my due diligence and have a high conviction, I have no problem catching falling knives because I mean, we grinded for two, no, six months around, more than that perhaps, 
around the two dollar level and i mean news was just kept uh, getting better and better so what was i supposed to do i mean the intrinsic value of novo in my view just kept going up and the price didn't do anything so i just you know kept on buying and now i'm close to all-time high again uh and uh, i don't know interestingly enough i mean even though uh even though, I mean, the share price isn't past all-time high and stuff like that. But, I mean, many of the trolls have already uh, piped, down, piped down, basically. So, the question is, like, okay, if the no investors were sheep, etc., for sticking around and hopefully buying during the stretch at $2 uh, while you're being, you know, bashed and ridiculed and whatever... Uh, what does that say when the the bashers and trolls or you know the ones that just have to have an opinion on everything uh, when they get quiet just because not not just because but I mean that much haven't changed I mean things have gotten better obviously but I mean uh, some of the arguments the bashers had I mean did they just disappear because Noah started to rise I mean that's that's what I've been saying. It's like being bearish no isn't being a contrarian. I mean, being bullish no, in my opinion, is uh, being a contrarian because, I don't know, 99% of the sector probably wishes that no does not succeed uh, because, of course, it would be the most, uh, the scariest thing in the world if uh, no turned out to be, I don't know, even... 10, 20% of what the uh, 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 big bulls hope it will be. I mean, nobody wants to miss, you know, that kind of case. So, I mean, it makes uh, sense, I guess. Um, but anyway, for 2020, uh, my largest gold positions are still uh, Novo at number one. Um, then there's... Uh, I don't know, almost a three-way tie between Irving, uh, Irving, Line 1, and G GFG Resources. Uh, I've also been starting to pick up TriStar Gold, which I think is looking uh, yeah, basically uh, cheaper by the day. I mean, the st stock hasn't really moved, and gold is at 1500 and and uh, they're a sponsor so i mean i might be biased and i'm uh, starting to acquire shares and i have no problem uh, if tristar just uh, lingers around here for a while i mean I'm, I'm a value trader i want to buy sheep i it, it can be actually i mean i don't really like uh, I, I don't get too ecstatic when my favorite stocks go up especially i mean Especially if no news has come out, if the case hasn't changed, that just means that the opportunity is, you know, getting worse because, I mean, there's not, uh, there's less money on the table. But, I mean, if, if like, Novo, for example, would, you know, tick up 5% on a news item that uh, should have it up 10%, I mean, then I'm happy for... Uh, for the rise but i can still you know get in uh, below fair value so i mean the worst thing in the world and which is uh, a bit of a problem today is that i i'm really excited about all those stocks especially those four stocks uh, now so i mean th that means i have to you know uh, allocate somewhat i mean it would obviously be much easier if there was like i don't know one obvious stock at a time that you could just okay wait for it to reach fair value and then uh, then trade into the next good thing but now there's uh, a few uh, stocks that are really nice and the GFG for example I mean that's uh, that's I guess the riskiest uh, of the bunch but uh, Based on, again, based on the valuation uh, currently, I, I'm very bullish on GFG. And uh, so I, I bought a lot of shares. And if if the share price uh, doesn't, you know, 
revalue on I don't know drill hype or whatever I mean I, I'll probably you know keep most of my position even though it's probably way too high for a uh, play uh, an exploration play such as this but I mean if, if almost not no success is priced in then I mean what am I supposed to do if, if there's a, I don't know 20% downside or whatever and you know if they hit some good holes and the upside is, I don't know, 300%. I mean, the risk reward in that case is obviously very good. But if this would have been trading up uh, uh, to, I don't know, 50 million, 60 million market cap or whatever, then of course the risk reward is worse because uh, assuming we haven't had news yet. And Lion 1, I mean, it's off to a... <laughs> good start but I mean you know what I mean uh, first uh, deeper drill hole already hitting high grade gold and in different loads as well so I mean that's obviously good and they will probably just keep on drilling got 17 million in the bank and honestly I think uh, Lion 1 might be one of the in terms of more I don't know Conservative risk reward uh, line one might even be better than Irving and Novo at the moment. Uh, I mean, it's a they got a mining permit, uh, they got a resource, a PA, and uh, yeah, uh, it's just a no brainer to me, honestly. Uh, because, I mean, again, given that they have a mining permit and uh, this is a potential uh, tier one uh, alkaline gold system. I mean, how much is really priced in if you subtract 17 million and uh, yeah, all those other factors. I mean, if this is a tier one gold system, it's going to be worth a lot more than 140 or 130 uh, million enterprise value. Uh, then of course Ir uh, Irving Resources, uh, which just had some news out as well, and I mean, I, I recently did a video on this. Uh, Irving isn't really cheap uh, based on what is known, or I shouldn't say what is known, uh, what has been hit yet, uh, but I mean, the smoke is... Basically, I mean, incredible. Uh, yeah, you should just watch my latest video. Uh, I would really like to pick up Irving uh, cheaper, even though I mean, it's it would of course drag my portfolio down because it's like uh, I think it's my second largest position at the moment. But at the same time, I mean, again, I'm after a good risk reward and uh, I would just like Irving even more if it went down uh, before the fun starts because 2020 should be very exciting uh, I mean just this comment in addition or recently completed a whole dome in mine site has encountered multiple epithermos veins within the boiling zone at vertical depths of over I mean first hole into the boiling zone uh, and they hit this above the boiling zone and multiple epithermal veins in the boiling zone. I mean, I don't know what the next uh, couple of shallow drill holes will show, but uh, and uh, but I mean, if we're talking, you know, blue sky and stuff, I mean, then it will be the boiling zone. Drilling that is key, obviously, because he, uh, this is good from a shareholder point of view, because I mean, from five meters and almost 20 grams per ton gold equivalent, that's obviously something that could be a bulk sample trial mine and sent to, sent to smelters and, you know, could make uh, or help Irving uh, generate some re revenue. And I mean... I like this uh, business, uh, uh, basically this uh, 
business plan that they, they are uh, drilling for themselves and shareholders while also uh, starting to drill for Blue Sky which is of course why Newmont and uh, possibly also Sumitomo are uh, both interested in Irving because I mean we have got a lot of projects and this Omu, the greater Omu project is so uh, looks so nice that I think it could warrant I don't know a, a dozen drill rigs or something so I mean that's the frustrating part uh, we could probably sustain a couple of uh, drill rigs per uh, per main target basically or yeah and uh, then uh, Noah had an AGM recently and there's just a bunch of news uh, from that or, or news uh, more possibly infill of context uh, but I mean this is what blows my mind it's like when you read some of the bashers uh, online or in the forums the Novo bashers they're like oh oh they don't have anything oh they got some gold bearing gravel yada 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 I mean if you read this then you obviously understand uh, what the insiders believe uh, they have and uh, again I mean Quinton is probably the smartest guy I've ever met and he has more information than anyone else so when I read people bashing Quinton or Novo acting like they know much more I just roll my eyes because I mean that to me is like the height of arrogance uh, that yeah okay uh, I or that they even think that they know more uh, about the Pilbara and the, uh, the Pilbara overall case than Quinton for example and, and Rob and the others and Sumitomo uh, even though I'm pretty sure uh, some of the guys involved in Novo have a few IQ points uh, above those guys uh, not saying that they're dumb it's just I don't know maybe they're a bit blinded by their own bias or something uh, because many people have dug in their heels and basically I mean openly stated a bunch of times that uh, Novo is you know overpriced and a pipe dream or whatever so of course they want to believe that's still the case because it would not look that good if you know you're wrong on the one of the most high profile cases around uh, so I think that explains a lot of it I just find it I mean I, I think it's good because that just tells me that okay even though these some of these guys have a lot more you know experience than myself and uh, know much more about geology and engineering I think I still think they're missing the a lot of the points with Novo and uh, I don't think they're better investors than myself even though they know more in the actual field that we're all investing in and that's I guess one of the strengths and uh, a point that I would like to you know uh, make uh, as I wrap up this year that sure there are people who, that know more than you and can uh, I don't know have a be easier time seeing risks or whatever but if they don't even uh, contemplate if the risks are priced in or not then it just becomes worthless information basically because I mean uh, if there's a ri let's say there's a let's say there's a uh, you know not, not a red flag but uh, let's say there's risk of something happening or playing out that's like okay it's 70 percent that uh, it is like this and in that case uh, the stock is worthless okay sure then the i mean the share price should account for that risk and if it's discounting more than that risk, then it still is cheap based on risk reward. But I feel like there's a bunch of people that just, you know, use absolutes. And I don't know, I guess that's from my poker background where, where every risk is 
you know needs to have a price that you can bet on a hand or go all in even though you you know 100% that you're not favorite to win it it's just that okay if uh, if the price is right i mean if it costs me i don't know let's say let's say the pot odds uh, which is a poker term uh, dictates that uh, even though i know i have the worst hand uh if I believe I have better than a 25% chance of winning this hand, I should be all in. Uh, at a given stack depth. And uh, it costs me less than that to win the same amount. I mean, then it just becomes a no-brainer. Even though, I mean, in, in, in a vacuum, I'm probably going to lose the hand. But over the long run, I mean... That might be a positive play, but but I don't think most investors think like that. They they look for certainty, and and they don't. It seems like they don't really think about what's priced in or not, and that that's I guess my whole stance or my strategy. I consider what's priced in, what's not, and what's the probability of something playing out. So, I mean, when people say, oh, the, uh, there's no Wits Waters Ran 2 that Noah's got, I mean, sure, I mean, that's obviously still to be proven. And, uh, I mean, I'm not sure that, I mean, even though I think the total gold content in the Pilbara is probably, I mean, I don't think it's less than Wits Waters Ran, but uh, uh, the amount of gold that can be economically mined might be much lower i don't know you know if when we're talking about common well and the nuggety nature and stuff and you can't reel it really and stuff like that so i mean sure i can understand that but at the same time it's like okay what would 10 percent of the wits mineable wits be mined uh, be worth or whatever and what's priced in i mean if you look at noah's market cap which some believe is very expensive uh 650 million canadian and then subtract uh, the cash and stuff. So, I mean, does that reflect anything near a Vitz or a 10% or 5% out of a Vitz? Uh, I don't think so. 1%, yeah, perhaps. Uh, a half a percent at least. So, I mean, in that case, if you're, if you're saying that this will never be mined or nothing will be mined, okay, then you have a case for no being overvalued. But if there's like, a, I don't know, 10% chance of Pilbara becoming 5% of what the wits is, I mean, this might be a steal. I don't know. I mean, nobody knows the exact numbers, but I mean, th that's the, in the kind of terms I think that, okay, yeah, sure. I, I don't need to be 100% sure of anything. I just need to have, you know, broad strokes and, uh, and know, okay, do, do I have a you know pretty high conviction that i think it's undervalued based on the probability of this being worth x then it's a buy and i still think that because i mean i think uh, with edging up and running if we would do i don't know 10 square kilometers per year or whatever and the uh, sorters work as good as they i mean seem to work i mean it shouldn't take that that long to you know return this value in in free cash flow uh, and okay what happens if a couple of hundred square kilometers is mineable what happens if a couple of i don't know tens or hundreds of outcropping combat well type conglomerates the mount row conglomerates are mineable okay what's that worth and if ore sorting uh, works well there and it's, you know, high margin operation, I mean, this number won't even come close to that. But of course it will take time. But I mean, everything takes time because w when I say people are very impatient with Novo, I just, you know, uh, well, I, I don't bother telling them. But if you go and look the, uh, on the companies that they're interested in, uh, or other companies they are interested in. I mean, most of those juniors or whatever, I mean, they're 10 years from reaching production and they're harping on Novo being slow. I mean, come on. First of all, 
most companies don't even have anything mineable and if they have anything mineable they're still 10 years away from production but i don't see people you know berating others com other companies for not reaching cash flow yet i mean they're basically working at warp speed and we will have possibly a close to a commercial uh look alike trial mining operation at Edgina this year and I mean how many could say that? Not many. Uh anyway, uh this has been a long rant and uh and uh, I'm looking forward for two thousand twenty and I think that uh or I hope that Irving Line One and GFG will come, you know, storming out of the gates and I think uh, Noah will have news throughout the whole year and uh, I just hope to see that they're doing what they're doing right now just you know uh, chugging away and and de-risking uh, the Pilbara uh, and uh, put us towards production because uh, honestly at the moment basically my hopes is that uh, some of those more drill specs I own I mean uh, which I think are really solid. I mean, if if they would hit something and really get going and stuff, I mean, I'm, my plan is pretty much to shave off some profits if they go up a few, I don't know, 100% and reinvest in Novo because, I mean, in, in personally, my blue sky is to have Novo be a long-term... Uh, major producer and, and just have start handing out dividends in a few years and just grow and grow basically so I mean uh, in that case uh, the thought of let's say in three years or something that they would be able to dividend out one dollar per share or whatever I mean that obviously might sound ridiculous to some but I don't think it is ridiculous but anyway uh, what would that be worth like in three years if you would have a yield that's you know above 25 percent uh that would be pretty insane in my book and especially if just kept kept on ramping up and let's say it's two dollars in five years i mean yeah that's the that's the stuff i dream about at least uh but i'm I'm a big shareholder in all these names and I own uh, other companies as well. Uh, but these are my, you know, main gold, uh, gold uh, junior plays. Uh, and uh, Line 1 and Novo are sponsors of mine. So keep that in mind and do your own due diligence and make up your own minds. Uh, because, I mean, nobody's going to be there at all time holding your hand. So, if you don't know why you bought a stock, you won't know why you should sell a stock. Uh, and, but yeah, basically, trust yourself and don't listen too much to other people. Uh, and just keep learning, basically. Well, anyway... Uh, Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year.